Hey, um, let's bring in a, a friend of yours, an acquaintance of yours, a, a colleague of yours from no, no, no. ESPN. He was a boss of mine. A boss of yours. All right. Well, now, <laughs> now, now he can be your friend because uh, George Bodenheimer is the former president of ESPN and the ABC Sports Division. He is the author of a, uh, a recently released book, Every Town is a Sports Town. And I want and to mention that all the proceeds go to, uh, I did some research on this, he is donating all the proceeds to the V Foundation, which is Jim Balvano, and ESPN has been totally involved with that. So, I mean, when people do that, I think that's showing uh, a great deal of class. And I, I thought that when George was my boss, and I think that now, and I want to mention George doesn't remember it, but we actually met at an SB Awards when we were at adjoining urinals, and he turned to me and he said, I like your work product. And I didn't know what that meant. He liked that I got my expenses in on time or that I actually was any good on, on I worried TV. where you were going when he said you. I worried what, George, I worried what, what he was going to say when, when, he, when he mentioned you turned towards him. I didn't know where the story was going. <laughs> Might not have been pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, George. Thanks for joining us. Oh, great to be with you, fellas. Uh, thanks for having me today. I, I've read the book over the last uh, two or three nights, and uh, I think there's a, there's, there's a review I read online that said, uh, Remarkable Insight. And I think that's it. Stories and We've had books about ESPN that have either been guys who didn't like ESPN or people who did oral history, but to have someone of his stature and having been there from the very beginning, and uh, I, I got to know very well and introduced uh, Mr. Rasmussen at a, at a dinner in Indianapolis one night, and he's the guy who started it, and, and George was there from the very beginning. I, I know you couldn't have seen what was going to become of it, but I've always told my daughter, you find a need and you fill it. That's what ESPN did, didn't it, George? Well, it really did, uh, Woody. I mean, that uh, really is a derivation for the title of the book, Every Town is a Sports Town. Uh, I was... Uh I was working in the southwest portion of the United States uh, calling on mom-and-pop cable operators saying, hi, we've got this 24-hour sports network. We'd like you to put it on your cable system. And I heard the same answer everywhere I was, whether I was in you know, Tulsa, Waco, Baton Rouge, you, know, you name it. It was, well, gee, George, the idea of 24-hour sports seems like a crazy idea, but we'll put it on because, you know, this, insert your town here, is a sports town. And, I, again, not news to you fellas and not news to us at this point, but way back when, 35 years ago, it just wasn't clear that there was this kind of, de of a demand to consume sports on a 24-hour a day's business. Uh, it was just considered an outlandish idea. Credit to Mr. Rasmussen for having the vision to, to make it work. Uh, and we, we want to start, uh, and I know we have limited time here, but your first job with ESPN was very, very interesting. If you tell everybody what they assigned you to do, because we have interns who work here. We have young staff here. And what did they say to you? We'd like you to go to the airport and pick somebody up. Who did yes, you pick up? Uh, you know, uh, I was a college graduate uh, with my economics degree, the human resources director. It's the first chapter in the book. He didn't really look up at me during my interview said I'd be qualified to be a driver. <laughs> You'll be the guy shoveling snow, and you're going to take guys like Dick Vitale to and from the airport. We might have an opening for you. Maybe we'll call you in a week, and oh, by the way, it pays eight grand. Now get out of here. That was pretty much my first interview. And uh, I drove home that night. I grew up about 60 miles south of Bristol. I drove home, and I, I was very close with my dad. I still am. And uh, he took me out that night for a beer, and he really... We talked about it because I was very unsure what to do. I was unsure what to make of the whole thing, much less, you know, should I take it if they called me. And he gave me what I think is the best advice I ever received. He said, if you're interested in sports television, or can be, then I would take the job. You'd be making a career decision, not a money decision. And you can, you can get your foot in the door and see where it goes from there. And uh, fortunately, I was at least reasonably intelligent enough to take my dad's advice and I spent the next 33 years at ESPN. George, is that the premise of the book? Is that the, the main focus, uh, how you helped build ESPN into the powerhouse it is today? Well, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, you know, I, I played a role, but I, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I'm trying to give credit to the people of ESPN. And if you, if you have the book and you read the last couple sentences of the acknowledgments, you'll really know how I feel. This book is for everybody who either worked at ESPN or works there now 
who played a role in, in building this company. Uh, we kind of feel like the ESPN company is an extended family. Uh, we feel fortunate to have been there all these years. Uh, a lot of us grew up there. There's uh, a great culture, and we just, you know, we're, we're kind of proud of what we built. And I've tried, that's what I tried to get across in the book. I continue to keep a, a an old magazine I got that's about, I think 14 years old that did a cover story on George and it told the, the history of ESPN and I'm sure George remembers the magazine I don't but it was it's a, a business magazine and I don't think people know and we're going to find out now Les you're going to find out George spent some time in Denver oh yes I have very fond memories of Denver I was my first managerial job uh and it was a three-person office down in the tech center, and uh, that was in 1985. And uh, in those days, Denver was the cable capital of the country. All the biggest cable companies were based in Denver. Uh, it was the place to be if you were in the business. The Broncos, I mean, the whole the whole industry was at the Bronco, was at Mile High Stadium on Sundays. You could see everybody in the business. Uh, bought my first house, uh, had my first child out there, uh, had a wonderful three years in Denver, and uh, really loved living there. You you George, I, I'm a little bothered by that story, <laughs> and, and I need to tell you why. What's that? I, I got here in 1984. I went on the air in 1984 on the, uh, the local NBC affiliate. I'm guessing at some point, even if by mistake, you watched me on the air one night and you didn't hire me for ESPN? What the hell is that all about? You know, Les, I was, uh, I was just a sales guy in those days, so uh, I'm sure I wasn't too focused on, uh, on the excellent job you were undoubtedly doing on the air. Uh, and we should, uh, you know, great story. Uh, how did it... Uh, we don't know how they invited me to be on ESPN. You'd think they would have actually <laughs> invited you. But talking about the time in Denver and, and making us a local, that Bill Daniels was a good friend of mine who was the father of cable television. He, he was a real supporter of ESPN in the early years, both uh, emotionally and financially. And I'm sure you spent some time with him. But while you were out here, I think wasn't that about the time you talked about this being the cable center of the world, which it still really is in terms of a lot of cable channels. There was talk about ESPN moving to Denver and I was told there was a reason why they didn't move here, why the network didn't move here is because of the cost of moving all the satellite dishes that were in Bristol. Uh, is there truth to that story? Well, I, you know, if there is, I was not aware of that. Um, the, there was a rumor to that effect when we were bought by Disney that we were going to all of a sudden be moved to Orlando and, and you know, made into some sort of an attraction or something, but uh, that, that, was, that, that didn't pan out either. It'd be difficult to move with the with the equipment and the 110 acres we have in Bristol now. But I'm just going back for a second to Bill Daniels. I mean, I, I write about this in the book. He, he, uh, you know, we, we established a friendship, and, and I talk about the value of personal relationships in business uh, in the book. It's one of the reasons I think this book will work yeah. well for business leaders, too. But Bill Daniels was the king, as you know, Woody, of personal relationships. I mean, he knew everybody, and he had everybody's respect. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful man. Yes, I lived at his house, Cable Land, here for, for about a year, and, and we had become friends. He and was, he gave me some great career he, advice he, as well. He, he yeah. was a friend to everybody. He really uh, was. Yeah. Now, that Cable Land was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you should have lived there instead of where you live. Uh, George, um, as you watch ESPN these days, uh, a company you helped build, um, what do you think ESPN does best, and what do you think ESPN still needs to work on a little bit? Um, what do we do best? I think we do best at being the go-to source for for sports news uh, when things are breaking. Obviously, I think people are tuning to ESPN, but even when things aren't breaking and you want to get your 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 you know your daily fix, I think Sports Center is the go-to uh, go-to source for that. Um, I'm proud of the entertaining programming that we produce at ESPN. I mean, you haven't lived until you program 24 hours a day of television, and then you multiply it times nine networks. Uh, trust me. But um, so I think that's what ESPN does best, as well as the as well as the diversity of programming, uh, whether it's bowling or boxing. Uh, you know, you you put that in with uh, you know put all the stick and ball sports, football, basketball, et cetera, baseball. I think the, the diversity of what you can see on ESPN and the go-to nature of SportsCenter is, is really probably one of the strengths. 
just uh, the other side. I, I'm disappointed you didn't mention uh, pardon interruption and around a horn. In well, there. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> I was, I and, was cold, gonna, and cold pizza, George. <laughs> you didn't mention cold pizza. Yeah, that was on his watch too. I the entertainment umbrella. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of around the horn. I'm a big fan of PTI. I'm a big fan of what all of you guys do, and uh, I mean that sincerely. It's a it's a wonderful wonderful show, and it's 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 a. Uh, it's must-see TV in the Bodenheimer household, I will tell you. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, other things we could do differently or do better, I think sometimes some stories, you know, get a little too much uh, wind in their sail, and you maybe stay with them too long uh, would, be a, would be, you know, if I had to poke any criticism at all, uh, might be in that area. And that's, that the intentions are, are right. Again, our producers are trying to do the best job they can for the fans out there. And, uh, and and that's what those are the decisions they're making every day. You, you mentioned an interesting thing uh, earlier about you hope that uh, leaders in the industry, because this book does tell how the worldwide leader became that, how George was a major part of that, even though he's a humble guy. Uh, but uh, I think under his leadership, it went from calf roping to actually covering every sport. Do you think there was a moment during your reign, if we can put it that way, where you had that wow moment, and I know you talk about those in the book, but you had your wow moment of this moves us into the major leagues? Well, uh, probably uh, right when I was in Denver in 87 when we got that first Sunday night football contract uh, was really a, a, a revelation of all of us at the company that we're, we're in the big time now. Uh, we'd had We'd gone from tape delay college football to actually live college games. Uh, had an MLB, you know, deal in the works, and but to get the Sunday night football deal and to convince, you know, our our leaders at the time to convince Pete Rozelle and uh, the others, uh, you know, the, the senior owners there involved in the TV committee to put games on, not only put them on cable but put them on ESPN. Uh, that was really a, a major turning point from a programming standpoint. Uh, final question. We know you're, and we should mention it again, uh, that the book is available on Amazon. It's available at every bookstore. I assume you're doing tours with it and uh, that the proceeds go to the V Foundation. How did you make that decision? I know you were personally involved with uh, that foundation throughout your time with the ESPN. Well, that was a pretty easy decision for me. I'm, I'm overseeing a uh, fundraising campaign for the V Foundation, a seven-year campaign that's uh, just getting underway. So I've I've signed up to do that uh, in my my post ESPN life, so it was frankly an easy decision uh, to to donate uh, my royalties to the book and uh, the V. We're, we're ESPN remains very involved in it, as you know, and has been since that first night when Jim Valvano electrified everybody with that speech at the uh, at the first ever ESPYS in uh, 1993. So labor of love, Woody, I guess is the answer, and uh, happy to do it. A uh, final short question, if you can. Just we, we mentioned the wow moment. Monday Night Football was there. What was your proudest moment uh, in in all the years from going from the mailroom to the top top uh, position at ESPN? Was there a moment where you said, "I'm really proud of what we've done here"? Well, there was a lot of a lot of those uh, moments. Uh, proud of how the company reacted after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we we were in in New Orleans and working. Uh, to help people down there. We conducted a telethon with the NFL, uh, our people. You know, the ESPN people come to uh, come to the aid of others who, who need help and are less fortunate in times like that. And, and those are the times that really honestly stick out to me. So the name of the book is Every Town is a Sports Town, and that's true. And, George, we appreciate you spending time with us, and I look forward to seeing you at a year no soon. <laughs> <laughs> Great being out with you, fellas. <laughs> Thank you, George. George uh, Bogdan. Every Town is a Sports Town. I'm looking forward to reading that book. Will you, will you lend me yours? I, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> I was going to ask yes. him to send me a free copy, no, I'll, but you I'll, lend me yours? Uh, yeah, All right. I've got it home. Uh, that was brought to you by Shanahan Steakhouse. It's been selected by the public as a best restaurant in Denver, and it is Open Table's 2015 Diner's Choice winner. It's a winner in our eyes. It's the best restaurant in town. So do what Woody and I do. Book a reservation today and go to ShanahanSteakhouse.com.